If you've ever thought about raising your own pigs for meat, here's a look at the eight month process from start to finish. Our adventure started at Folly Zen Farm when we went to pick up our piglets. Of course, while we were there, we had to visit the chickens and hold some baby goats. Farmer Digger showed us around his farm and gave us lots of tips on taking care of the pigs. He showed us how to ferment feed, and then we got to go pick out our piglets. Time to go home, boys. Piggies are home. Here we go again. We got one of our meat piggies, and he's a red wattle mixed with a mangalitsa. He's not too happy. What were you just doing for them? Spreading out their hay. Where are they? Oh, there they are. They're eating some food. Raising our own meat was something we really wanted to do on our property. We wanted our kids to gain a real appreciation and respect for the food they eat. Our property has a lot of large pasture, and we decided that the pasture behind the barn would be the perfect place to raise our happy pigs. Building a pig enclosure for the back pasture today. Out shopping, Todd did it. The pigs we got from a local farmer are a red wattle and mangalitsa cross. We wanted to give them the best life we could lots of space to roam and forage, shelter from the heat, fresh water, and all the pasture they could eat with a daily portion of hog grower pellets that we would ferment. Pig pan extended. pasture that we sectioned off with a solar-powered electric fence. 
Every few weeks, we would open up more of the pasture, and within no time, they had tilled and cleared the whole thing. were nearing 225 pounds. They loved treats like lettuce, carrots, apples, and pumpkins, and enjoyed getting showers with the hose. And of course, they loved their mud baths. I'd say they were living their best life. When winter arrived, they started to get their winter coats, and the colder temperatures didn't seem to bother them at all. We made sure their enclosure was filled with lots of straw, and they would cuddle together. We upped their food so that they would have lots to eat to keep them warm. Because of their extra hair, they would sometimes get sneaky and escape out of their electric fence without much of a shock. We had to adjust the height of the fencing a bit to make sure they stayed in. But near Christmas, the temperatures on the island became very, very cold, nearing minus 25. So we decided to move them into the warm barn. And every once in a while, we would let them outside to have a good run around in the snow. these guys into the trailer and the plan is that they're gonna follow us with the bucket the white bucket and into the trailer for their breakfast so we've trained them all these months on the white bucket they know that means food and uh, so fingers crossed
Kids are so close to getting in that trailer. Come on, boys. Get your big butts in there. Okay, inside the house now taking a break. We did how many attempts, Noel? Like 50. They're not going in. Todd thinks it's probably my fault because when they did go in the first time, I tried to close them in and then they got scared and ran out, so. All right, the update is that Todd has went to get some backup. The guys that are going to be doing the processing have offered to come help, so we'll see how it goes. So they made it, there they go. Off goes the trailer. All right, so we just dropped off Lord Pagram and Chumley's. And it was sad, I gave him a little pat said my goodbyes, um, but we're really happy. We found some Mennonites down the street um, and they take care of them and they do everything well. It's quick, it's one bad day. Um, and then they'll be processing it as well. So we're excited about that, but you know, you get attached to these guys. So a little bit sad too, but we're thankful. With four of us, we ended up slowly pushing the boys into the trailer using three metal gates, one on each side, and two of us slowly walking with the other gate towards the trailer. It took a matter of minutes, lesson learned. A couple days later, we picked up our meat, all 475 pounds of it. We bought a vacuum sealer and packaged it ourselves for longevity in the freezer over the next year. Bacon, ribs, pork chops, steaks, roast hams, hawk sausages, and a ton of ground pork. It was a lot of work, but very rewarding. I'm measuring out the ground pork into two pound portions so that we can freeze it. Hope you like ground pork.
Thank you, Mr. Chumleys and Lord Pagram. What a gift they were to our family. They were sweet, gentle giants and pasture clearing machines who cleared and fertilized our future garden. Now they will feed our family. We truly believe that everyone who has meat as part of their diet should deeply appreciate, understand, and recognize that there was a life taken so that you could do so. I'm proud of how we cared for them, respected, and loved them. I'm very, very grateful. Thank you, thank you.